Hi, Archie Hunters. Um, I'm Shi Tian Tian. I'm an architect from Beijing, China. My name is Louis Becker. I'm the design principal of Henning Larsen Architects, uh, and I'm part of the jury of the Uber Award. Hello, I'm Martha Schwartz. I am a landscape architect. Hi, I'm Eric Chen, a general and artistic director of Het Nieuwe Institute, or the New Institute in Rotterdam. Hi, Archie Hunters. My uh, name is uh, Chet Del Tredal Torsen. I'm Norwegian, a uh, complicated name. I'm a co-founder of uh, Snart Architects, designers, uh, landscape architects. Well, we're new. We're really thinking about what we can actually contribute. That's very important and how what we're doing is relevant. What's great about the Opel uh, Award is that uh, amongst the, the, the many prizes out there, it really focuses on, on, on the content. And by content, I mean what the project is about. So in, in that sense, it's almost not relevant, whether it's a building or a master plan or a process or a material. Uh, it's about what, uh, what is contributing to uh, the critical questions and issues that architecture is addressing now. So it allows us, within the Oval Award, to choose the projects that we feel are in the contemporary, working to the benefit of society and to the benefit of the public and to the benefit of the world. So it's, uh, this award is not looking with the established um, big stars, but really sets a new kind of a agenda. And with the third year, I think it gets, uh, uh, each year it gets more and more exciting. What's important with the Oval Award is that it, it covers more ground than a traditional award would do. And from the very beginning when we formulated the, the award, it was, it was obvious that we were trying to get out of this, uh, let's say, standalone project idea, but, but looking at more holistically on, on architecture. So I never really set out with sort of the goal of saving the planet, if you like. Um, my background is in civil engineering and I was sat in a lecture one day and they were talking about concrete. And I was like, yeah, concrete's pretty cool. I like it as a material. You know, I prefer it to steel and all of this. So I thought, this is what I should do. Um, this is what I should go in and research. And it wasn't until I really went into all of that, you realise just how much of an impact cement has and you know, the proportion of the global emissions that it's responsible for. But then it was really working with Barney where I kind of found this is a thing that we can, we can really do and just might work and have a, you know, an impact on a global scale. I think accepting your own shortcomings and finding the strengths that match that in another person just makes working in a team so much easier. Everything for us is about scale. That's, you know, a concrete that you can only make a couple of kilos of is beyond useless. We need to see this in buildings as, as soon as possible to make, a, to make a real impact on the global emissions associated with cement and concrete. So we're working with a few sort of property developers in the UK and also in the US and, you know, really engaging with them to say, right, what developments have you got coming up on the horizon? You know, which ones are you really focused on the sustainability? Where is there a benefit to you as well as the planet and to us. And then it's a case of sort of working backwards from there. How do we get to that point? How can we get to that point even faster? What do we need to do to accelerate these things? I think it's all about breaking the cycle of concrete manufacturers saying there's no demand for zero carbon concrete and concrete users saying there's no good zero carbon concrete. Right, it's just a, it's just a loop that just goes around and around and around that helps absolutely nobody. And we're just trying to get in there and go, there is actually a zero common concrete you can use and if we can get people on side, developers, contractors saying, yo, we've heard that we can use this, we want to use this. We had a voicemail today of somebody saying, I want to use this material, how much is there? 
you know, the demand is obviously there. We just hope that the cement companies then hear that and go, actually, you know what? It's in our best interest. It's in everyone's best interest to look at this more seriously and, and deliver what people are actually asking for. Technology always has to continue to evolve. And I think it will be very much the same for this technology. As we see it now, it fits within the market and the criteria. But who knows what's going to happen in the next 10, 15, 100 years. So I'm sure the product will, and process will continue to develop, whether that's us or you know, other people doing things with it as well. We, as a sector, put up about 8% of all the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the building industry and what we do really contributes to climate change in a major, major way. So the question is, are there other opportunities for us to be able to build in a way that is not harmful? This seems like to be a real possibility for the future. With this Cevatec, you would think, what could we do as an architect? Maybe we can also initiate from material, from how we use the material to our own projects. Thinking about that 90% of buildings in this world, they are made out of concrete in some aspect, then we somehow need to go to the root of the, of the problem, of the issue, and, and work with that. And that's why I think it's, it's a big pleasure for me personally that we are really Uh, focusing on that and also hope that others will kind of share our attention on these two uh, great uh, research, uh, I wouldn't say kids, but uh, young people that have come up with new ideas. Radical ideas always come with a lot of un uh, uncertainties and I think what's great about uh, Saratuck and also uh, Obel's contribution to their work is that this gives them a chance to sort of, you know, again, test things out, see what the uncer uh, uncertainties are and hopefully um, work through them. If you can produce CO2 neutral, maybe even negative concrete, then we're talking. Then we're talking because that means that even in the poorest parts of the world where concrete is being used today in replacement and of any other type of materials gives some sort of democratizing of architecture in itself. You have to repair the industry and that's what this project is about.